Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I am Blake Cabot. I am the owner of facepaint.com, and I'm here today with Pam Kinnenberg, who is, uh, I live right now in Connecticut, having to abandon the city of New York. And, um, and we're uh, here today to discuss something that isn't Halloween. So this is, these are fall designs, which is a first. Um, and so I'm very thrilled to have Pam, as always. She's done, you know, she's taught everywhere. She's done everything. And she's going to, to, going to the Washington State to visit her grandson. So that's fantastic. And, um, and just to remind everybody, uh, this is, um, uh, well, facepaint.com, we have a 25% off sale. So I, everything, at least until November 11th. Uh, so you got three days to go buy lots of face paint. And I know um, we're all we're all excited about this new uh, vaccine that may be coming out, and that could actually put us all back back to normal, which would be thrilling. Um, anyway, so with that said, uh, Pam, take it away. All right, thank you, Blake. Um, I'm excited again to be here as always, and I've got several designs to show you, and um, hoping that you'll all be able to um, use them on your jobs once we all get back to face painting again. So a couple of fall designs. I'm going to start with um, one called a fall leaf mask. And um, so we're going to start by um, doing our background. And I'm going to be using this 3 4 inch flat brush. This is from the Art Factory. And um, I'm going to be using this one stroke called Bootiful, like the word boo as in Halloween. And um, it is a, it's a great one for Halloween and for fall. So we're gonna be starting with this one and I'm gonna load my brush up with this. For some reason, um, this takes, this particular one takes a long time to get it loaded up so that it works good on this practice board. So we're gonna load it till it's nice and full here. I'm going to just test it a little bit on my arm. Hello, Oregon, Argentina, France, Hello. Spain. Germany. Wow, that's awesome. Hello, everyone. All right, so let's hope that this is loaded good here. And I'm going to start by um, doing a little kind of um, leaf type um, paint right in the center of her forehead. And um, one thing that you can do to kind of get it centered is just put some guidelines for yourself. So just put a little um, mark like right in the center towards the top like that. Mm -hmm. And then another one at an angle here, just so that you know where you're going to be going with your brush. So it gets to be more centered. And then um, just do some swoops like that's the first one. Mm -hmm. And a swoop up to the middle. And down the other side. That's a good leaf. Thank you. Um, it is, um, it takes practice. Let me tell you, I have been practicing on this for a long time to get this right here. So, um, I encourage you to just get the color and just practice this, these little swoops. Anyway, there's our center. And then we're gonna go on from there and do some more um, of the same types of, um, I guess, design. It's these like, they're like a, it's like a U that you're doing like that. Just gonna get these a little darker. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we're going to go to this, the center part, like right here. I'm going to mark a little center line right here, and I'm going to take another little swoop down there and one on the other side. We're going to be doing very symmetrical sides on this design. And if you need to take a sponge and just kind of Belgium. Blend that center part. We're going to be putting a gem in the middle right here. Mm. 
eventually. So I'm not really too worried about where this, what's happening right in the center. Okay. And then another, a few more of these views. These are upside down views. These were the top views. I'm going to um, flip my brush so that the yellow is on the outside and do, um, do a couple right here. And then I'm gonna do one on the other side, just like this one. Trying to get them symmetrical. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to flip my brush so that the dark is on the top and do a little one in the middle like that. I ran out of the dark. It's getting trying to get them the same size. They're not really the same size, but that's all right. So it's just sort of, it, we're taking sort of what a maple leaf um, would look like, but not really painting an exact maple leaf, just giving the look of the edges of the leaves, if you follow me on that. Um, mm -hmm. There. So that's the top part. And then um, down the sides, here, we're going to actually do more of a leaf, uh, an actual leaf. So I'm going to start that leaf right out here again with another U and bring it down here. Like we're gonna start with our leaf going down and you'll see what I mean by that once I have these top ones. It helps to break it up into segments mm -hmm. so, you're, so that you kind of um, have, you, you know, your, um, pieces of the leaves ending up in the same spots. And it just helps to paint it if you can just do little segments at, at a time. Mm -hmm. Then it doesn't get so confusing. So you kind of have a map of where you're going. So we got that first section. And then um, I'm going to paint the leaf coming down and wrapping around. I'm gonna try not to go below her nose. So um, anytime you bring something too far down the face, it, it's not very flattering. Um, you want to try to keep it all a little tighter so that your lines are moving in this general direction here mm -hmm. and here, all pointing up eventually towards this center focal point. So I'm going to do the, the leaf on this side first and um, kind of do it sideways with these little sideways U's and the points that go down and come to a little point right here. And then I'm gonna go up like that and like that. So you have this sort of side leaf and you can blend that, blend that in like that. Okay. See that. So there is one side. And if you guys have any questions, please ask. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to ask Pam. Absolutely. So I'm going to bring this down into the point, a little U and come like this into another little point. And if you have to start from a different position, depending on what um, <laughs> what side is easier for you to work on and to move your brush, you can do that too. Because see here, I'm just, I was working kind of opposite that I did on the other side. Because here I started here and went up. Here it was easier for me to start here and go down. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just blend this a little bit. I'm going to go over the other side a little bit more because I didn't get it very dark around the edges. Okay. I'm just going to go back here. And when you're going back over that, any sort of tips that you would do? Or is it, it's just like doing it the first time? Just, <sighs> just try to keep it in the same, I don't know. Um, it takes practice. I guess that's my tip is to try to do this. It, and it works different on the board. It's going to work different on everybody's face because you're working flat here, but on a face, 
you've got a whole side of their head to work with, which is a little easier. Right. You know, I'm trying to put that whole leaf so that you can see it. And so. And what split cake is that again? It's called Bootiful, B-O-O dash Tiffle. Okay. Got it. All right. And I, you know, always wish my lines were crisper. Yeah, Patty says it's because it's on the forehead. There. Okay, so we're going to just leave it there. Uh, if I go over it too many times, the colors all blend together and then you don't, then you just get mud. So we'll leave it here. All right, so there's our base. And then I'm going to take this cake called Brilliant Bling Rainbow Cake mm -hmm. and a petal sponge. And I'm going to do the eyelids. So we're going to load this up on a petal sponge. That's and the reason I'm, cake. what? That is a pretty cake. Yeah, it's awesome for fall and Halloween designs, but fall is, looks just like leaves. And I do the eyelids last. I don't do them first. I do them last after this base is down so that I can blend in these areas here with, um, with this sponge. So any area up here that's sort of left like pain, you can just blend it in here. So that it looks like it's connected together. All right, there's that. And I'm gonna clean up her eyes so Mm -hmm. Does it look like she's got paint over her eyes? That'll look a little better. There we go. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is do some line work. And I'm going to do some pinstriping line work on this with mm -hmm. a number two. This is the Art Factory, a number two liner. And um, I'm going to start with this color. This is deep, what is this? Deep Merlot. It's a global paint. You see, I've chopped this one up. I've been using it to make split cakes from for myself. Um, that's why it looks kind of weird. But I love, love, love this color. It's so great and it works really great um, if you don't want to use black as an outline because it's nice and dark and rich um, color but um, it's gonna work nice because it's picking up some of the red tones in this, in this cape or in this, um, the colors that are here. And I'm gonna get kind of a nice consistency on my brush. So here we've got loaded and I'm gonna come down and put one line there. So you see I'm starting above this little U on both sides to extend up past it. And then I'm going to do a shorter one right there and here. And with pinstriping, uh, one of the techniques is just like a crossing over line. And I'll show you what that, what I mean by that. So with this line right here, I'm going to cross over this line in the same shape as this U, like that, and like that. So it's mimicking this U right here. So it looks like it's, you know, like the design is flowing right. And then I'm gonna do a couple more. I'm gonna do one coming from these U's here and going up like that. These liner brushes are so great to create really nice long going to thick to thin lines. They work beautifully for that. And then I'm putting a shorter one here. And then I'm going to cross over right there and follow that same U shape. 
And then I'm gonna do a couple lines right at the top. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. That one coming here. And there. And remember, I'm going to put a, a gem in the middle, so I'm not worrying about what's happening right, right here at the moment. OK, so those are my um, the uh, deep burgundy lines. And then I'm going to take this color. This is Petro Fab Petrol Blue. Is that what it's called? Petro blue. Yeah. And it's a nice um, contrast in a nice dark rich color to the deep Merlot that I just put on. So it adds another color to this mask. Mm -hmm. I've repotted this so it doesn't come in this container. Gilbert says this looks great, which I couldn't agree more. Oh, thank you. Hi, Gilbert. Hi, Zuri. Is that kind of? Hey, Patty. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you're here. Absolutely. Um, all right. So here I'm going to come in with this line right there. And then I'm going to cross over like this and go up with these like that. And then same thing on this side, go up. <coughs> and cross over in a U shape. Now, once you, it, for me, <laughs> it's so much fun to put these lines in. Here. What? Uh, uh, Sarah says these are beautiful colors. She really likes the colors. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, it, they're this nice autumn rich, those deep fall colors that we see on the trees. You can't go wrong with these. Absolutely. One thing about, um, so there's your top lines. When I start working with this and the liner brush and it's so much fun to do these lines, I tend to like overdo my lines. <laughs> so you get too much going on. So that would be the tip I would say is know when to stop because sometimes less is more. If you get too carried away with putting lines all over, then you just end up really kind of more having the design looks more messy. So you kind of want to limit yourself a little bit. And I keep like messing up my board. <laughs> okay, good thing I have baby wipes. All right, so Always those, um, I've got one more of these um, burgundy lines to put on and that's gonna go kind of around the eyelid. And I should have done that when I had my brush loaded but I forgot that line, so. But I'm gonna come from the corner of the eye, swoop around and end um, down here where between the bridge of her nose and her eye, um, just so you can kind of put it down in that little um, crevice area, so. I think everybody likes the petrol blue. So you come like that. That petrol blue is, is, is an, it's a super fantastic color. It's very beautiful. And then I'll do this side and come up and around. And down, look at that. And I do have this um, design that I did on myself that I will be posting after the webinar is over. So you can see it done on an actual person. Awesome. And who makes the petrol blue? Pardon? Who does the who makes the petrol fab. blue? It's fab. Yeah. I would or superstar too, I, I would imagine. Um, all right, so now I'm going to put some um, yellow dots. This is crazy yellow right here and a very nice yellow. So I'm gonna get a little puddle worked up here so I can do some dots. And this is going to be kind of my highlight color. And when you're doing designs, it's always good to remember that um, contrast in your colors makes your um, design pop um, rather than, I mean, if you if your goal is just to do a kind of a monoch monochromatic design and that's how you want to turn out, that's one thing. But always remember um, that it's really appealing to the eye if you have 
um, some bright, bright light colors and some also dark colors for that really nice contrast in your work. And so I'm just going to add some of these dots here and just go up and get smaller as I go up. And can you see how that just um, makes your design pop because you've got you've got a, a contrast of color going on. And then I'm going to do one up here. And one there. And then I'm going to do dots down the center. Like that. Okay, so while that yellow dries, I'm going to paint her lips. And we're going to do the Merlot on her lips. And then um, if you have time and you want to make um, the lips even cooler is you use a dark brown around the outer edges and it gives it sort of a vignette um, look from dark to lighter. This is a beautiful, beautiful color for lips. It's so rich. And I wish yeah, that is. these lips are like amazing. <laughs> I wish we all had these lips like this. <laughs> Uh, they look really nice on this practice board. <laughs> well, that's good. Look at those. Wow. She's got some lips going on there. Okay. So there's that. And then I'm going to take this um, dark brown. I think this is, I use this a lot too. I love this. It's a very, very rich dark brown. It's fab also. Um, but what you can do is just add this to like the sides and then blend it in. And so it gives it that almost like an ombre look. Uh, what color is that again? Patty asked. This is the, this one right here, this brown one. Mm -hmm. It's, it's fab dark brown. I'm just going to take this and blend that in. It just gives the outer edges um, some depth. That's pretty cool. I love it. <clears throat> it's not blended perfectly and on someone's lips, it's gonna be different. But anyway, I really like the fact that it goes from dark to light in the center. Um, it's going to take a long time for this yellow to dry, but oh, well, actually, it's not doing too bad. Okay, so two more things left on this design. I'm going to add some glitter to it, and I'm using um, Vivid Glitter, and this is called Harvest. I'll open it here. So it's kind of a fallish color, and I'm also using their Glitz Glitter Glue, and this is just a wand. It's full of glue in here. And so you can precisely put the glue where you want it. And mm -hmm. I'm going to add some like kind of in a streak kind of right alongside this yellow here mm -hmm. and right here. And then I'm also going to put some coming up in this direction up on here. So I put my glue on. And then um, I'm going to use this. A lot of times I'll use like a, like a, a small square brush like this to um, dip into my glitter. You can wet it down so you can pick up some glitter that's wet. You can also, you can also sort of stick it in this glue that you've applied so it gets a little glue on it. And then it'll pick up more of the, of the glitter. So I'm just going to. This is one of Meg's favorite uh, favorite ones. Oh, thank you so much. So we've got some glitter going there. And of course, glitter always makes everything more beautiful. Put 
some right up there. <sighs> okay, so we've got our glitter in there. And now for the finishing touch, um, I made up a bunch of, let me see if I have some paper. A bunch of um, gems and all of these would work on here. They're in the fall colors accented with that dark um, teal, dark teal blue. So I'll just show you what a few of these look like in the center. This is the one I ultimately ended up using. Mm. And I'm just going to lay that on there. So it just finishes that whole design and um, looks beautiful. But you could add like um, this one here I did. And that extends out a little further. So that one looks really pretty. It has more of that blue in there or teal. Um, there's also one if you wanted to bring out more of the reds in this design. This one has some red gems on it. I don't know, which ones do you guys like the best? Here's one that has a really long gem at the top and it has more of that, that really brings out the green. I like, I like the blue one, yeah. I think that one's- the blue? You yeah. like that one? Yeah. yeah. That's good. They're, they're, it was fun to make these because I haven't, I don't usually make these colors, but with the fall designs, they worked so good. Um, so then there's, anyway, just to give you an idea that, um, of what different gems that you can use to bring out different colors. And that is our um, fall leaf mask. Is there any other questions on this one? Uh, I don't think so. I think everybody loves it. There's a lot of hearts running around Facebook. Oh. <laughs> awesome. And Sarah Thank says you. that one is the best. Yep. Oh, well, that was good. You. That was good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So the next one we're going to do is my fall kitty design. And we're going to start with the new gal here. And um, I'm going to move these paints out of the way. And on this one, I'm going to be using this cake. This one is called um, Cameron's Collection Glamoween Rainbow Cake. And um, so we'll be using that one. And then I'm going to start with the craze white as our base for the kitty. And I'm going to use a petal sponge for this little kitty. And get that a spray. It always is nice, you know, when you're creating uh, designs for fall, for Halloween, for um, Christmas, or whatever. Um, some of the really go-to things that are, that if, you, if you're like, I don't know where to start when coming up with a design for fall. I don't know where to start with coming up with a design for Valentine's Day or, you know, what have you. One of the basic things you can do is start with um, some of the things that we paint all the time, like cats, unicorns, puppies, mm -hmm. skulls, whatever, and then make them into something for that holiday. Um, so, you know, if you're one of those that struggles with designing new designs, um, that's a good place to start for you. Take a cat and um, make it into, um, because then you're starting with a familiar point. You've got something already decided for you. So that's what I'm doing here with this cat. We're gonna do a fall cat and I'm just gonna start with her muzzle. It's a girl cat. <laughs> All these Thank designs God. I think today. <laughs> All these designs today, I, I apologize, are girl designs. Um, it Don't just- do happens. apologize. Um, I know boy designs are always seem to be harder to, to do. And I've done a lot of boy designs, but we're just going girl designs this time. Seems reasonable. Good, because that's what I got planned. <laughs> so trying to make the sides even here, that's hard for me to do on these boards. It's hard to do on a face too. I always end up with one side that's lopsided. But face painting, we don't have to be perfect, do we? Never. 
you know it's we just art. Have to, it, it's, it's an art. art right and nobody's going to come back to you and say hey this right side is much wider than the left side can you repaint it i don't think anybody will ever do that has anybody ever done that to you no not to me <laughs> I bet somebody has that something like that happened. <laughs> it could be. It could very well be. But let's hope it doesn't happen very often. Okay. The thing that I like about using this petal sponge for cats is that it creates a really nice, you know, these ends create a really nice um, rounded side. It almost does it for you. And the other thing, you can get the top of the cat using this part here, round it off. And then the best part is that this is in the shape of an ear. So you can just get a real quick and easy ear with this sponge. It has enough paint in there. So that the cat base is um, pretty slick and fast using mm -hmm. these sponges. Voila. Um, let's, I'm gonna look this up. See. It's hard for me to see at this angle if I get these. Yeah, Patty agrees with you. She says, uh, "General art is not perfect. We care too much about perfection." We do. We do. I'm a perfectionist, and I think many artists are perfectionists, and um, that's oftentimes our our real downfall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's our base. And if you wanted, you could spray um, that with some glitter at this point. I'm not gonna do it right now, but when it's wet, um, that's always a nice addition to just spray it with some like iridescent white glitter just to make it sparkle. So we're gonna leave this here right now. And then I'm gonna come in with this um, Glamoween um, split cake. And um, I've taken one of these sponges. These are the My Kim sponges, and they usually, uh, this one is stained, but it's usually that big. Mm -hmm. um, and I cut it because I, I only want to use um, these five colors. I don't want to use this black color or whatever that color is at the top. So I cut a sponge so that it fits more with these bottom colors. Mm -hmm. And what cake is that? Um, this is called Glamoween. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. It's Silly Farm Cameron's collection, Glamoween. Got it. So let's, I spray my sponge. I always spray my sponge. I never spray my cakes. And I'm just going to pick up <coughs> five colors. Spray again. And here is Glamoween for those that are following at home. Awesome. Okay, now that I have these on, um, I'm going to percent off. Less you guys we forget. Take advantage of that twenty five percent off. That's huge. I just ordered something on the last time that Blake that you had twenty five percent off, and it was amazing how much I saved. It is a great time. I know maybe you know you're not painting as much, but go ahead and order supplies for when you will. We all need white. We all need black. Um, you know, those, we could be assured we're going to use those paints. 25% off is, is a sweet deal. Um, and I encourage you to take advantage of that. Three days, you got three days to do that. Exactly. Um, you never know when you'll have an opportunity like that again. So I'm going to do the eyelids um, and I'm going to put the pink on the outside and the green on the inside. And I, whenever I use these, I just curve them. I don't know if you can see that it's how I curve it with my fingers so that it's curved around the eyelid. Like that. Mm -hmm. And you can go back in and clean up your edges with the baby wipe later. So I'm gonna do the same on this side. And so I'm adding this nice, bright, rich, colors to my white. And if you want to go back in there and if you mess up, you can go back in with your white and just kind of blend those areas in. It's okay. 
Um, and then I'm going to clean up her eyes here because we it doesn't look very, very nice. There we go. And then I'm also going to use the same sponge for several other things. You can go a long ways with this. I'm going to put a little bit right on her nose. And in real life, the nose is dimensional. So it's sticking up. So it works so much better in real life on a flat board. It's a little hard to get this like right in the center because it, you know, on a nose, it's just pointy. So you can do this super easy, but I love to add a little color right on the nose like that. Isn't that cute? That's so cute. I love it. And then um, I add color at the top mm -hmm. just to give that white some color rather than leaving it just that stark white. And you can also go back in with your sponge and just blend that in with the white sponge. And the other things with this straight edge, you can go ahead, I'm gonna wet this down a little bit and just put in kind of that part where the, the ear folds over there. So you can get a lot done with just this one sponge. Um, it would be a quick on the design, on the job design. And I'm gonna go blend that in. So it's not so rough. It lightens it up a little bit. There we go. So we have a little bit of a depth created in the ear. So you know that that part recedes back. Mm -hmm. And now the final thing that we're gonna do with this same sponge, I'm gonna reload it one more time and we're gonna put some leaves on. Some fall leaves. And for that, I'm using this BAM stencil. Um, it has fall leaves. It has a big one and a little one. You can see that right there. And so I'm gonna use these as the outer portion of her face. And I'll start on this side. And um, I'm just gonna position just part of the leaf like to the edge of her face here. And pay attention where you put it because you'll be doing the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna use just a, a portion of this. I'm not gonna use all the colors. So I tend to bend my sponge back so that I don't get um, the green on there. So I'm just gonna tap. Okay, I found that stencil. Perfect. Okay, so there's our leaf on this side. And then we'll do the same thing over here, trying to get it to match up. You see where the bottom is here. I wanna make sure that the bottom of this leaf is at that same um, height. So about right there. So tap that in. So now we have a leaf over there. I'm going to fix this part right here to blend that in. And then um, I'm going to use this smaller leaf right here. And um, that will be put right underneath the eye. And I'm going to use the green and the gold portion of this for this leaf. So there's that one mm -hmm. and do one over here. Just like that. And then I'm gonna do one more leaf like right above that. And I'm only, I'm just gonna position this. Actually, you can clean your stencil off quick. Like that, so you're starting fresh. And I'm gonna position it sort of in between this big one and above the little one. And then you use this top red portion or pink and just pounce that in there. And be careful not to cover that green 
the, you just want a portion of it there like it's stacked together. And I'll do it here too. Any questions, anyone? Uh, doesn't seem like it. Everybody's just admiring your work. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Okay, and so we have a leaf there. So now, and then one more, I put one more right at the top, almost like a crown. Right there. You pulse that in. I'm going to do it one more time, get it a little more colorful. There we go. There. Now we have our leaves on there. And um, they sort of, um, they sort of, if, to me, these leaves sort of almost remind me of fur because of their edges, how kind of ruffled they are. So it, it helps fill in that that part that rounded part of the face that would be right here and notice it's it's just again it's going in around and kind of curving this way you always want want to curve it toward this the focal point in the center you don't want to just bring it down because then that's not very flattering and it doesn't follow any movement this has movement it all has movement up to up to the center right between the eyes lily thinks that's clever as a, Estefania thinks it's a great idea. Oh, thank you. We also got a, Magda says, muy bonito, which I think oh. is, that's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, I, it sounds good. It does sound good, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. So with this design, um, I'm going to outline it using that um, deep Merlot color again that I used in the last design. This works, like I said before, this works really good for outlining so you don't need to use black. Because on this design for fall, I just thought black would be a little bit stark. Um, but this um, color here really uh, sets it off nicely while providing you with that nice outline. So we're going to start at the top. and do our line work. And some nice thicks and thins. I'm using a number one round brush, a low Cornell, but you could use any, you could use a number two or a number three. It all depends on what you're comfortable with, with your line work. And Here's where my pink was. So this is the inner ear right here. And I'll put some little tufts of fur coming up there. And then on this side. Do the same thing. But isn't this a really nice color to use for line work? It's just really beautiful. And um, one thing I like about this, it's global and global it tends to be, you know, like a, it's more waxy. So it, get, it gives a nice crisp line. And it's, which global is that? It's some um, deep Merlot. Okay. And, you know, this is something you can do. It really depends um, what your preferences are, but you can outline your stencil leaves area if you want just to make them more defined and, and I'll just do it so that you can see but you can just quickly outline them and then you can sort of see them better it really depends on the skin that you're putting them on um, if they stand out um, good enough, then you wouldn't really have to do this part necessarily, but you can do it just, it just defines it a little bit more. And then I'm going to put a little curl cue right here. Like her little tuft of hair coming down right there in the center. It kind of fills that area up a little bit. I scratched my board right there. So sorry about that. That wouldn't happen on regular skin, but on this board, that paint just comes right off. Samara loves that pigment. Thanks. It is a beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful paint. color. 
All right, and so above her eyelids, we're gonna give her this sort of cat eye. And of course, on real people, it's never gonna be this much distance <laughs> between the eye and the, and the eyebrow. Um, but on these boards, they're not um, anatom uh, anatomically correct. So you just have to kind of make it look cool. And then I'm gonna add some eye brush or eyelashes to the outer corners. These are some more like cat eye shapes. Mm -hmm. These eyelashes. And then I'm gonna add um, just some eyelashes underneath too. Like that. There's more. Gives her that nice girly look. They love those eyelashes, girls do. Okay, so then we're gonna do the muzzle. Like we do, and the nose. Mm -hmm. I just do like a little, when you're doing it on the actual nose, these are just going around the nostrils and down that bottom part. Just a quick nose. And then um, I just decided to put some lines going up just to give that nose a little shape. And of course our lines splitting that center. And you can, this, this would be a really quick design. You could do this one on the job pretty quick. Prima, Prima loved it. Prima, are you watching? Ooh. Yes, she is. Hi, Prima. I miss you. <laughs> this COVID thing, nobody can see each other. Thank you for, for liking it. We have a big Latin American contingent. And then um, the bottom lip. And I'm painting this in this deep Merlot again too. It just is so beautiful in that color. And then um, one of the things that I like, you know, that we all actually like to do is put glitter on that lip and it works really good in a kitty design. And so I am using um, Mehron. Um, it is paradise glitter called Cabernet. And it's a really beautiful dark glitter. Ah. And um, okay. yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. So I'm gonna just dip my wet brush in here and just roll some of that on and it gives, it works really nice with um, this global deep Merlot paint for a nice, beautiful sparkling lip. Um, I got a little bit ahead of myself since I was down there. My paint was wet. I was going to put that glitter on, but there's a couple more um, lines that I'm going to do in this design. I'm going to quickly go around these leaves just to define them a little better so you can see them. And you don't have to be perfect. You can just do this super quick. And you see how, if you look from this side to this side, you see how much more that they stand out if you outline them. Mm -hmm. uh, someone uh, found you through uh, LOD Brody. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. So we have a big French contingent as well. No, Wendy, Le Wendy LaBelga, sorry. So Wendy ah. LaBelga was here, was, uh, was a friend of yours or something. Is, is a friend of yours? Uh, is that how you pronounce her last name? Uh, Wendy LaBelga? Yeah, she's, needless to say, Belgian, so. Oh, yeah. okay. Awesome. Okay. Just a quick, and you don't, you know, you can, you can just do, again, just do whatever you have time for. 
you don't have to do all this extra stuff, but it just, I think by adding that outer line just really um, helps um, bring out those leaves a lot. And then one last thing um, that I wanted to put um, with this deep Merlot color is um, some swirls coming up from, they come up from the base, just right here where the um, beginning of her, her top lip is up to here. So we're gonna do a swirl like that. And on this side, it's kind of almost like vines coming from the leaves mm -hmm. and then a swirl this way and a swirl that way. And it sort of completes that um, whole design so that it just um, wrap, it, it, it fits together. Um, so there's no like uh, space in here that's kind of just hanging like it was before. All right, so that's the um, base. And now I'm gonna add a little chunky glitter and this one is done. Uh, let's see, I'm using the same glitter. Where did I put that? All right, I'm using the same vivid glitter in harvest color and um, I'll do the same sort of technique with this. Um, I'm putting some, whoops, there's a lot of blue there. I'm putting glitter right in this area here to bring to just keep bringing your eye up this way. And then I'm gonna put a little glitter like in her little crown leaf right at the top here. I'm gonna pick up some of that glue. Some glitter down there. And it just makes this design really sparkle and come to life like that. So there you have the fall kitty. Meow. Meow. <laughs> wow. So we got through our second design. So yes. that is very well. Do you want to try you know another what? one in seven minutes or do you think that's... I, I'm not, but I'm, I, I don't think I'll be able to do it in seven minutes. Okay. But here's what I'm going to do. Um, I wanted to show you uh, this, and I, this isn't painting, but I wanted to show you what I do. Um, and I don't, boy, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I might have to zoom back out again. Um, let's see. What I wanted to show you is kind of how I organize some of my paints for um, for different holidays. If you're anything like me, I'm a paint hoarder. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I have so much paint because I have to have like every new color that ever comes out. Um, and I have a lot of paint, a lot of brushes, a lot of sponges, a ton of stencils to the point where, you know, you just can't take all of them with you every time you go out on a job. So then uh, my idea was to um, have some tubs like this that house all of my stuff that I've collected for the holidays. And this one was my is my Halloween tub. And this is just a small one. These are, I get them like at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or whatever. It is about 10 and a half inches long and about six and a half inches wide and about three inches deep. So it's not a huge one, but the, I love these tubs because they, I just, I love the way they work and operate and, and how they hold my stuff. So I have um, a collection of all of my stencils for Halloween that I have in here because I don't use these throughout the year. Um, so I keep them in this box. And then I have um, many of my different paints that I have specific for this particular holiday. Mm -hmm. And um, here is a, um, a glitter that's meant for fall. It's called Trick or Treat. I have that in here. I have some orange glitter in here. Um, this is where I had my Glamoween and I had my beautiful um, split cake in here. And so when this holiday comes up and I'm like, oh, I gotta have, you know, I gotta find my paints for this. I don't have to go digging through all my paints to find just my Halloween ones or just my 4th of July ones or, you know, whatever. 
I have my glitters, my paints, and my stencils all in one nice little compact little tub. And so I have, I have one for sports, um, for the different sports teams around here. There's um, the Bison and their green and gold and um, the hockey team, um, uh, they are red and white. Mm -hmm. um, my hometown um, sports is light blue and yellow. And so I have a tub just for those, you know, sports that I have that I do paint for around here. I have a bucket for them. So just as a, I guess this is more of a tip for you for organizing your paints and um, having easy access to them when a certain holiday comes up. It's like, oh, here's my Valentine's paints or whatever. So um, just a little tip. That's how I That's do it. Great. That's a great tip. Thanks. I mean, you are the most organized person I've ever met. Well, um, <laughs> thank you. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So, um, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Prima says that was a great organizing tip. So that's fantastic. Oh, thanks, Prima. And um, okay. Okay. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, and we're going to have yet more webinars on Mondays uh, from here on out. And next one is um, we have... Uh, um, what? no, no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Dear Lord. Um, Frida, Frida, who's also watching Frida Haas awesome. is going to do furry mm -hmm. winter friends. Oh, so, don't miss that people. that will be great. She's awesome. Yeah. So that's next Monday and it is at, cause I think Frida's needless to say in Europe. So where Frida's going to be. Oh, Frida's Frida lives in Washington. Oh no. She lives in Washington state. That's right. Yep. Yeah, but she's from Sweden. So it's at 5.30 to 7. Uh, it's from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern time. So see you guys next week. And thank you very much, Pam. Uh, Pam and thank you, you much, everybody. You bet. And I'll post post designs on facepaint.com of them these designs painted on me. Okay. I appreciate it's it. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.